Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and look what we have. Well, 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 if that isn't a Firewall Ultra release date, I don't know what is the 24th of August. We've got the release dates, we've got pre-order details, you can pre-order it right now by the way, we've got the pricing, we've got all the pre-order bonuses, the digital deluxe edition, we've got a new trailer that we can go over with new features that they show off and you know it's all kinds of all kinds of crazy stuff. It is a good day to be a fan of PSVR 2 or Firewall in general. So let's go into it piece by piece and I'm going to start with the PlayStation blog and I've highlighted the parts already that I think are of the most importance or if they're new stuff I've highlighted them. So new Firewall Ultra PvP gameplay revealed launches the 24th of August, which is just over a month away. Not long to wait at all. And what are the chances that Phasmophobia releases that same day as well? I bet it will. I bet it will. First Contact Entertainment is thrilled to share the first gameplay trailer for Firewall Ultra along with new pre-order details on the game and its different editions. And this is from David Jagno, formerly at Upload Viewer, but he's been, with, he's been with First Contact Entertainment for the last few months now and he's Strategic Communication Manager. Ever since we announced Firewall Ultra, the next evolution of the Firewall franchise last year, here on the PlayStation blog, the outpour of encouragement from the community has been nothing short of amazing. The pure excitement in all of your comments, messages, tweets and posts have us all even more motivated to make the game as great as it can be. Which is why we're so excited to debut our new gameplay trailer featuring fresh PvP gameplay footage. To cap off that excitement today, we're thrilled to announce that pre-orders are officially live for Firewall Ultra starting today with the launch days of August 24, 2023. We will get to that trailer soon, don't worry. Incredible haptic feedback in the PlayStation VR 2 Sense controllers for realistic weapon feedback, headset feedback when you take damage, or toggle on night vision goggles. We have confirmation night vision goggles are going to be in the game. They were teased in Firewall Zero Hour before that released. And of course, they had to get rid of the dark maps. They had to get rid of the flashlights as well because the PSVR 2 or PSVR 1 couldn't handle it. But now all that stuff is possible and it's happening and it's confirmed to be in the game. If I seem like I'm going a little bit fast through all of this stuff, it's just that, you know, I'm going quickly through the stuff that we already know about, basically. And I'll slow down on the more the more newer information or the juicier stuff and here you get a gif which will be in the trailer by the way a gif from the trailer giving an example of how you can block the flashbang with your hand it's not just your eyes you can use your you can close your eyes to you know negate the vision penalty but you can also use your hand to block off the uh, the bang of the flashbang and save yourself that way so two ways to deal with that, so that's pretty cool. Firewall Zero Hour players know how much we continue to support and build on the game after launch and that we value feedback from our community. So we will be looking to explore adding more content such as new weapons and contractors and maps, which is usual, that's par for the course with Zero Hour. However, additional game modes is a new one. We've never got an additional game mode before in Firewall Zero Hour. And possibly manual reloads post launch now we did already know that hardcore mode was going to be coming and it was going to be introducing manual reloads but the reason i've highlighted this here is because they've introduced this word to it now possibly possibly manual reloads so all of a sudden it's not guaranteed makes me wonder if you know maybe they're having potential issues with this maybe it's more difficult than it seems keep in mind if you're looking at something like pavlov you've got a couple of floating hands to reload whereas firewall zero hour you look down you got the full body maybe the arms go out janky and stuff i don't know uh, but just that, I just thought that was interesting that they used the word possibly. You don't throw a word like possibly around unless you know you're potentially negating a bit of a blowback in case it doesn't happen, so there might not be a 100% certainty. Keep an eye out for our operation calendar and more info on our post-launch plans as we get closer to the release of the game. So in the next month, we're going to be getting more information. We're going to be seeing an operation calendar, perhaps, which is, you know, we never got really a proper mode roadmap before until, you know, a good few months after launch with zero hour. Uh, but now we might see, you know, operation whatever coming up in November or something, maybe October. I don't know. In the meantime, we are excited to reveal that we'll be offering ways to acquire unique variants of our weapons when playing Firewall Ultra for the first time ever. Now, this is kind of interesting the way they've worded this. We know that we had the legendary weapons in Firewall Zero Hour with some seasons. They came along in a certain season. I wasn't there at launch, but it was like, you know, Okoro's AK-47, which really changed the entire skin of an AK-47. These unique weapons are seem to be a little bit different. They're like in addition to legendary versions. So these unique weapons, and there's a little asterisk beside us, and the asterisk means 
Unique weapons require game progression, so they're not something you have to buy, you just unlock them by playing the game. So these unique weapons will come prefaced with grace attachments, an exclusive skin, and legendary versions will even have a different look altogether. We've also overhauled the game's internal infrastructure with an immersive social lobby area and shooting range in our safe house between game sessions. We knew there was a, going to be some kind of a lobby area, but they're calling us an immersive social lobby area and this shooting range of course is there too. You're also going to have dedicated servers to help minimize dropped network connections and a new best of three round based player versus player formats that will have you spending less time waiting and more time playing. How many times do we hear that complaint from Firewall Zero Hour? Skipping down to the part I highlighted so it is vital to be aware of your surroundings at all times while playing Firewall Ultra. Nighttime outdoor maps like Oil Rig as seen in our gameplay trailer or even the dark, decrepit corners of indoor maps like Office can get incredibly dark and dangerous. Thanks to the dynamic lighting and realistic shadows afforded by the Unreal Engine 5, we're able to deliver an incredible sense of tension, immersion, and visual fidelity in real time. So lighting is going to be a big, big thing. In terms of a jump from Firewall Zero Hour to Firewall Ultra, I think lighting is going to be the thing where we're going to be like, wow. And it's going to impact gameplay. You're going to have hiding places that you didn't have before because they were too well lit in, you know, Firewall Zero Hour and all of a sudden you're in the dark. And you're going to need to take tools into account like flashlights and night vision goggles and, you know, it adds a whole new dynamic to the game. Firewall Ultra will feature a brand new player versus environment game mode. So you had a co-op game mode in Firewall Zero Hour, which is basically the same kind of game you played pvp except it was infinite enemies but this is different a brand new player versus environment game mode so a fun new co-op game mode hopefully that will let either you by yourself or you and up to three other contractors take on deadly enemy ai across the full selection of maps it's a whole new way to play firewall and we can't wait to share more about that mode soon so that's interesting they've been teasing this kind of pve stuff for a long time there seems to be a little bit of an emphasis on us and bus. We're still not getting the reveal. We still have to wait and see exactly what that's going to look like. We use eye tracking in a number of ways to enhance actual gameplay in Firewall Ultra. For example, you can close your eyes physically to avoid the blinding lights of a flashlight, which we knew already. You can also close your non-dominant eye when aiming down the sights of a gun to make the view even tighter for slightly more precision. So this is um, this is that thing what we didn't really know about before. I'm still not sure if this is the same thing. Maybe this is an addition to us. Where, because I think they said before you pull a trigger or something like that, it gives you a, an enhanced aim. I think this is something a little bit different, I think. Or maybe they've swapped it with this, I don't know. But basically you close one eye and it gives you a slight zoom so that you can aim better. Although that is kind of interesting because what I what I've heard in real life is that you should not close one eye. You should have both eyes open. But I guess this is one of those things where you forego realism for the sake of fun. Maybe. Or maybe that is real. I'm not a weapon expert, so maybe that is not true. I don't know. These are both natural things players find themselves doing while playing. So we reward you for getting lost in the experience, having a sense of presence, and giving into the immersion. So that could be yes. That could be it. Even though First Contact Entertainment know that you should have both eyes open, maybe it's just a human nature that you want to close both one eye. And when they're doing their testing or whatever, they find that people do it anyway. So they might as well might as well play into that. Just wait until you play one of the darker maps and witness the dynamic lighting from your side barrel flash lights attachment for the first time there's nothing else quite like us again the emphasis on lighting i think it's going to be really really you know it could be like a jaw dropping type moment and it's over a flashlight which sounds like really simple but uh it's the simple thing sometimes when you get it right it can be really impressive finger touch detection and the adaptive triggers elevate things even further letting you feel the different resistance levels of each weapon in your hand so pulling the trigger of a pistol is completely different from pulling the trigger on a sniper rifle. Sniper rifles 100% confirmed, even though I feel like they, I think they might have been already. There was like a picture of a fella holding a sniper rifle, it could be even in the key art here. But yeah, to see it in text is nice, it's confirmed, sniper rifles are in. And experiencing the intense haptic feedback, sorry, haptic kickback of a shotgun is incredibly visceral. Using the PlayStation VR 2 Sense controllers, you'll be able to flip a knife across your fingers for stealth takedowns. 
or simply show off this nimble hand movement to friends. So you'll actually be able to, and we'll see this at the end of the trailer, he does like a trick thing with the with the knives where it's like, you know, well, we'll see it, we'll see it, we'll talk about it when we see it. But it looks like you'll actually be able to do that, I'm not sure how. Anyway, you can even make realistic hand signals and silent commands to team members for better tactical realism and interactivity. PSVR 2 Sense controllers make for an incredibly immersive game experience. We leverage the amazing hardware features of the PlayStation 5 to make it easier than ever to join your friends. If you see your friends in a game of Firewall Ultra, you can quickly hop directly into the squad immediately from the card in your PS5 game base if there's room. Load times are blazing fast to cut down on friction. That all sounds excellent. So now we get into some juicy pre-order details. I mean, it's coming up in just over a month, so you might want to know some of this stuff. So let's skip down. So you have two choices on editions. So you can choose between this Firewall Standard Edition, which is $39, I believe it's $34, well, $35 sterling. And, uh, well, I say $39, it's $40, let's just call it $40. $40 Euro and $35 sterling, I think. And that includes access to the full game. So basically, that's just a basic package, the same price Firewall Zero Hour was, which I'm kind of surprised by. I thought it would jump by a tenner, but it didn't. Or you can splash the cash for Digital Deluxe Edition for $59.99, $60, $60, and I'll assume $55 sterling. I don't know, who cares? Who cares what's going on over there in the UK? When you pre-order, which is a separate thing, we'll talk about the digital, what you get in the Digital Deluxe for in a second, but when you pre-order either edition, you'll get access to one of our favorite legendary weapons, the Reaper X75, and you'll get a look at that in a sec. I'll put it up on the screen. This is included for both standard and digital editions when pre-ordered, so I'm just gonna enlarge this. We'll have a good look at this all together. So this is gonna be the Digital Deluxe Edition. You're gonna have your base game, you're going to have an early unlock of four contractors, and the four contractors are these ones. Fang, Mako, Node, and Skip. So all four of them are returning characters. We know that the way skills are going to work in Firewall Ultra are slightly different compared to Firewall Zero Hour. For example, this character here, I believe his name is Havoc. His skill incorporates Bullet Sponge and uh, I think maybe Heavy Juicy as well, if I remember right. So he's got like, they combine the skills, basically. So, you know, the characters we knew, in Zero Hour might play a lot differently now in Ultra. Now keep in mind they're advertising here for contractor outfits, not camouflages, not skins. These are outfits. So it looks like customization is going to be, you know, they're going deeper into customization. Notice how they're kind of all wearing the same helmets. So this suggests to me that you can kind of dress them up a bit more. It's not just picking the paint job. You can uh, get new outfits entirely, which is, you know, Pretty cool. And then over here you have that Reaper X75 legendary weapon, which is the pre-order bonus. And uh, God, don't even ask me to attempt to identify what kind of weapon this is based off. It kind of looks like it has the frame of an M4. I don't know what's going on with that magazine. It looks like an accordion to me. And uh, you got a foregrip, you got a weird stock situation going on there, red dot side or something, I don't know. Uh, but any of you, you know, gun buffs or whatever in the chat can let me know what this is based off. And then you also get four weapon camouflages here, as you can see, demonstrated. And over here, and this is important, you guess an operation pass. There's a little asterisk. So if we zoom all the way into the two asterisk, asterisk, asterisks, access to complete content for one future operation. And it says date to B or TBA, which is to be announced, I think. So when the next, when the future operation passes, when the DLCs, the seasons finally start dropping, if you get the digital deluxe, you will get that first one, that first op pass for free. So that should help justify the 20 euro markup if you want to go for digital deluxe. If all this other stuff doesn't do it for you, maybe that will. With that out of the way, let's move on to the trailer portion. Now I'm going to put it on Muse so that we can properly, I'm gonna make myself smaller too. Exciting stuff. PlayStation Studios, you know it's gonna be quasi. Straight away we got the shootouts on rig. We're seeing, well, let me you know, you know, let me just play through the trailer once and then I'll start picking it apart, if I can. First Contact Entertainment. So it's interesting that they're really focusing on the oil rig map in all of the pre-release kind of stuff. We've seen Office as well, but Oil rig definitely getting a lot of love. We're seeing the access point. How you interact with this. 
we'll go over that in more detail we're seeing a bit of uh, volumetric kind of like the lighting is bouncing off the, f the smoke from the smoke grenades which by the way we're seeing smoke grenades flashlight action the smoke looks very very thick obscuring that vision hold on a sec I'm losing res no I didn't and then at the very end we see the knife action that little spinny tricky stuff boom we start again this time I'm gonna be pausing as we go to see if we can identify anything so straight away this looks like Mako judging by all the tattoos and how she's got that new hairstyle where she's got like the two bun things on top uh, the bullets there seems to be a lot of like I think these are called tracers again not not an expert but it seems like there's a lot of tracer effects going on with the bullets so it kind of seems like you know you really see it now I don't know if it's something to do with the lighting like maybe on a brighter map that wouldn't be as intense or whatever but it's certainly in this footage you can notice a lot of like you see them bullets coming at you or at least the tail ends of them as for the weapons they're using it looks like it could be a tailor with no iron sights you know it's just iron sights on the tailor I'm not too sure Here we see like almost the entire group in one small location, just blasting each other. And of course the character we're controlling is detonating C4. It's kind of hard to make out who is who. This could be Okoro maybe. It's possible he's lost his beret. And it's kind of hard to know over here. Maybe Node or Jag or those mines could be a female. Or mines on her back could be Jag. A lot of stuff is happening fast. A lot of stuff is happening very fast. I'm going to have to put the slow motion on, but let's do it this way first. So, is there anything we can get here? Oil rig, South Mediterranean Sea, the time of day. Just getting some nice slow panning shots. You're really getting a look at how that dynamic lighting is lighting up the environment, or maybe more properly, how it's not lighting up the environment. We've got some really dark spots for potential hiding spots. And here you can see a familiar scene from Firewall Zero Hour. However, you know, the lighting situation is way different. We're seeing this red glow coming up here. You're going to see, you know, flickering lights and stuff over here. It's a lot more moody, atmospheric, I would say. And uh, keep in mind, this game does have foveated rendering. So if you're looking at something here and you think that's not very sharp, it kind of looks blurry. Where the game, the player is looking is going to be the sharpest. You know, so outside of that, it's not going to look as sharp. So when you're playing it yourself, you will not see the blurriness or whatever. And of course, they've got the flashlights in action as well. You're going to see pop. They just pop the flashlight on there and it's illuminating over here. And this is where we're going to see an access point and how you interact with them. It seems you kind of point at them and then you hold the left grip button. So you get your hand nearest and then the L1 symbol appears. I don't know if you have to hold it because it seems to happen pretty quick, but um, like the ring doesn't seem to even fill up. Is that my imagination? Or maybe it started filling immediately when you got nearest. Yeah, it seemed to be like an instant fill. Maybe that's for the purposes of the trailer. I don't know. Uh, but that's how you get into the access point and now the laptop should be available. And here we got like a moody scene of smokes being popped. I assume it's smokes. Maybe it's like a steam pipe in that area or something, but it looks like it could be smoke. And then the flashlights lighting up the smoke as they're shining through. More slow. Oh, here we go. We'll get our first look at what a flashbang looks like when it's tossed your way. Let me go back a bit. So you're wandering and then all of a sudden, boom, a grenade comes out from behind this corner. You can see it's got a red glow. So that's new, that's different. It's gonna give you uh, an opportunity, I guess, to block us, close your eyes, block us. That's a warning for you. And it seems to, it seems to flash a couple of times as well while it's in the air. Or maybe it's, no, it's got a light source. It's like it's lit, it's like it's a lit, uh, like a fuse or something, which is unusual for a flashbang, but it seems to be given off some kind of a light source. You can see when it's hitting the ground, it's got a glow underneath. When it hits the wall, it's got a glow. But then when you look at it itself, it's just, obviously there's nothing less, there's no fuse. It must be just a visual effect to make it, you know, more identifiable. And then our contractor here shields his eyes with his hand. It blasts like this, and then you can see immediately he can see. 
immediately you can see this guy steps out. This is the this is the culprit who threw the flashbang, thinking he's blinded him. He shielded his eyes. He thinks he's going to get an easy kill now because he's blind. However, he doesn't, and they're fighting back. And uh, a lot, again, a lot of these tracer effects. I think I got the name right for tracer. Again, another one here. We're in an interior now. Ooh, what was that a little dodge maneuver? What was that? He seems to duck down. So it could be that the player in real life is ducking down. But if that's the case, then it's a really smooth, like nicely rigged animation, if you know what I mean. Seems to go into maybe he just hits the crouch button. Maybe he just hit the crouch button. He seemed to he seemed to do a little dip or something. Uh, but he evaded some gunshots there. And now we just got an intense shootout somewhere on the oil rig. Keep in mind that just because these maps are returning from Firewall Zero Hour doesn't mean they're the exact same. They've expanded on them in some ways, it seems. You know, it might be that they've opened new areas and whatnot. So if some of this does not look familiar to you from Firewall Zero Hour, even though you played that game. It could be like a new part of the map that they've opened up. And then that's what the flashlight looks like at a distance. You can see it's still quite bright. That could could somewhat obscure headshots and stuff like that. And then shooting through the smoke. I assume it's a smoke that's been popped. Just a lot of shooting, really. We're, going, we're getting a look at some of the different guns, I guess. Some of the different attachments. Red dot sights. What was that? Okay, so something exploded there. I'm not sure what it was. I didn't see anyone throw anything. But this guy down here, there seems to be yeah, something red beside his face. I don't know if it's a grenade or maybe it's a planted C4. But that gets detonated. And that explosion effect looks quite nice, I must say. And he gets blown. BTFO. We got some container action with the grenade being tossed. Now, of course, grenades are tossed with your eyes in this game. It's kind of like uh, you look where you want to throw us and then it automatically happens when you release the button. Now, it remains to be seen whether they'll add manual grenade throws when they add manual reloads. But here we see the grenade makes direct contact with that individual's head and detonates. And we've got some more explosive effects going on. And here we get just more looks of kind of like the details they've added to the map, like all the steam coming out of the pipes. I wonder if you shoot them, does the steam come out that way or if they're just like always doing that? I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. But it creates like cool looking moody corridors basically. Grenades. That was like an impact grenade by the way. It looked like it immediately impacted as soon as it hit his head. So impact grenades are back. And here we're back to this scene again where it just detonates. Now it seems to be a quick cut there. I don't know if it cuts to the perspective of the enemy that they were shooting at. It looks like it does. Okay, so you get to see the actual C4. So, this gentleman or individual planted a C4 on the corner over here, pulls the trigger. And this is what it looks like. This is what a C4 looks like and this is what it looks like when you get actually blasted by a C4. Boom. It looked like they kind of stayed in the first person view there for a sec, which is unusual. Maybe it's my imagination. Maybe you immediately go to the third person view right after the camera cuts there. And here we see the beloved laptop returning. You approach us. Presumably you press L1 on that too. To hack us. Yes, you do. And that one was filling up. So unlike the access point, that one had a little a little timer to fill up on it. And then we're gonna go look at that knife. Knife attack. So keep in mind, Firewall Zero Hour did have a knife, but it was tied to a melee button attack, so you clicked the right stick and the knife would just do a stab attack and it was gone. You couldn't equip it like you can here, obviously. And not only can you equip it now, you can do tricks with us and you can seem seemingly like change the position of us, see how you flick it around. It was in a standing position, he flicks it to an underhand, or an overhand, or whatever you call it, I don't know. And it looks like he might be sneaking up on Fang, maybe. Going for the stab. And boom, a quick cuss. Now, you know, it'd be nice to see what that stab would look like. Would there be blood? You know, what kind of a, what kind of a situation would that be? I think we have covered every 
important detail now obviously there's a good high probability that i've missed important details in the trailer this is not really the in-depth trailer analysis i wanted to do but you know i'll be keeping my ear to the ground and seeing if i did miss anything and if i did i'll make a video of that in the coming day or so anyway what did you think did you enjoy the trailer how's it looking how's it shaping up for you what do you think about the release dates the price I think I'm kind of surprised by the price. The standard edition is cheaper than I was expecting, so I'm pretty happy with that. And then, of course, all the details we got in the blog as well that reveal stuff that we still haven't seen, you know. And there's so much to go over. Just let me know your thoughts on us in general. Thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Before I go, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all my videos, but also let me thank all of my channel members. Purple Unicorn Ga, Muzz, Deadeye Dan, I've never seen such behavior in the war room before. Chopped PPE, Mr. 777, No One Knows, Movemaster Mick the Shape Throwing PSV or Gamecast, Deej the Pumpkin Patch Kid, and Peace. Hawken, thank you very much for supporting the channel. You can become a member too by hitting that join button below if you're interested in getting special perks and whatnot. With that out of the way, let me say one final time, thank you for watching. Please stay moist. Firewall Ultra is near.